Okay, let's talk about the Praxis Elementary Education Math Exam. And uh, this is uh, test code 7813. And if you're watching this video, which obviously you are, I'm going to assume that you are preparing for this particular exam, and that is fantastic. And uh, what I have for you here is a nice practice problem that you should be able to handle uh, without too much uh, difficulty if you are fully prepared for this um, exam. So I'll kind of refrain to describe what this is, but here is the problem. Now, if you know what this is and you know how to answer this, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm gonna show you the correct answer in just one second, then I'm gonna fully explain what's going on here, including a step-by-step -step solution. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades, and I know exactly what it's like to take uh, certification exams to include uh, the Praxis exam. So let me just tell you something that you probably already know. A lot of people do not pass these exams the first time out. Okay, unfortunately, it takes some people two, three, four times to pass. Now, it's my belief that everybody has the capability of passing the first time. But the reason why a lot of people don't pass the first time is because they underestimate how much uh, math they need to know. Okay, I'm here to tell you, don't let this elementary education part of uh, the title here kind of deceive you. You need to know a lot of high school level mathematics to be successful on this Praxis exam. So if you need a way, you know, if you're not quite sure how to study for this, but if you need a great way, which obviously you do, you need a plan to pass this exam, I have an outstanding test prep course. Uh, you can find a link to that in the description of this video that will help you get fully prepared for this particular Praxis exam. But uh, let's go ahead and get into this problem now. So what are we talking about here? Well, we're talking about an absolute value problem. Okay, so we wanna find the absolute value of all this stuff right there. And what is the answer? Let's go take a look at that right now. The answer is five fourths. All right, so again, this is a very easy problem. Now, if you didn't get this right, don't panic, just use this as feedback. Uh, and if you did get this right, this is by no means any indication that you're fully prepared, but that is a, still a nice job. Now, here's the deal, right? We are talking about absolute value. So I'm just curious, do you, what is the definition of absolute value? Can you answer that? Well, hopefully you can, because that's something you should uh, definitely uh, know uh, for this particular praxis. But let's go and get into the actual mechanics of this problem. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we have to simplify uh, this kind of uh, problem inside the absolute value. So we have negative 3 eighths minus 7 eighths. So we're talking about subtracting these two fractions. This is super easy. Remember, when you want to add and subtract fractions, if the denominators are the same, all we need to do is uh, add or subtract the respective numerators. So here they are the same. So we have uh, 8 as our denominator. So we're going to subtract negative 3 minus 7. And we can see that right there. So negative 3 minus 7 is, of course, negative 10. And that's going to be over 8. Okay, so negative 10 over 8, we can reduce that fraction down to negative 5 fourths. Okay, so that really makes our problem the following. Okay, we're taking the absolute value of all of this. We did that math, and that now is negative 5 over 4. So what is the absolute value of negative 5 over 4? Now, most people uh, don't have a dif uh, too difficult time uh, answering basic absolute value uh, questions like this. They'll just say, oh, it's just the positive of this number. So if this is negative, it's always positive. If this was positive, this would be positive. And that is correct. So this is how you answer the question. But really, what is absolute value? Let's go ahead and just quickly review this right now. So absolute value is the distance a number is from zero. Okay. So here, let's take a look at this right here first. So when I look at absolute value, you kind of really think about like being asked a question, hey, how far is two from zero on a number line? That's what absolute value uh, is, right? So of course, the absolute value of two is two. So it's saying, hey, the, uh, the distance from uh, two from uh, zero on a number line is two. So we can kind of see that visually here. So here is zero, here is two. The distance is two units. So in other words, if you have like a, 
uh, you know, a roller or a tape measure, right? You would kind of measure, you kind of go out there. Oh, that's two units away from zero, no problem. Okay, so two is two units away from zero. All right, now let's take a look at this one here, this problem. So the absolute value negative two. Well, again, this is asking how far is negative two from zero? Okay, so of course we know the answer is two, but you can kind of see visually that the distance is the same, right? So negative two is in fact two units away from zero. Anytime you're talking about distance uh, in general, you're talking about positive units, displacements, right? You're not talking like, I'm gonna go negative 80 miles down the road. Although there is, uh, uh, you know, uh, times where you do think of negative values in terms of displacement and distance. But when it comes to absolute value, just remember, it's always positive, right? Distance from zero is always going to be positive. All right, so hopefully this was pretty easy stuff. Again, don't, um, you know, take this as an indication of, you know, this is like the hardest stuff that you'll see on this particular practice. Again, you're going to have to know a lot of mathematics uh, to pass this thing the first time. And that is what I'm going to encourage you to do. So again, if you are struggling or if you kind of, you know, don't have a fully organized plan to study for this particular practice, check out my test prep course. Again, you can find a link to that in the description below. It will really, really help you out. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on this particular Praxis exam. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.